Good morning, this is Father Nico Montalbeni from Toronto. Our processional hymn is number 379, Rejoice the Lord is King. Dear friends in Christ, as scripture is read, let us allow God's word to speak to us and ponder its meaning for our lives. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. 
Then Joseph said to his, his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all of Egypt. Come down to me and do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. The word of the Lord.
Give us the humility to trust in your loving care and the patience to be faithful in seeking your kingdom, that we may come to share in the inheritance of your saints through Jesus Christ our Savior. The second reading is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. As is with the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, my brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. you on the cheek offer the other also and from anyone who takes away your coat do not withhold even your shirt give to everyone who begs from you and if anyone takes away your goods do not ask for them again do to others as you would have them do to you if you love those who love you what credit is that to you for even sinners love those who love them if you do good to those who do good to you what credit is that to you for even sinners do the same. If you lend from those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. 
Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I think the words of today's gospel apply very much to the current times we live in. We're living in times right now where there's a lot of people very agitated on both sides with each other. Whether we're talking about the, uh, the convoy here in Canada or we're talking about tensions between Russia and the Ukraine, um, tensions are getting stronger and stronger. And one of the things that it's so easy to do is to demonize those we don't agree with or those we have a grudge with. It's very easy to do. It's something that human beings have been doing all throughout history. One of the dangers of doing this is the more a situation escalates, the harder it is to come back down again. In today's first reading, we encounter Joseph, who's become governor of Egypt. Joseph ended up in Egypt because his brothers essentially sold him into slavery. Um, he was the favorite brother of their father, and initially they wanted to kill him, but eventually they agreed that uh, what they would do is, is sell him. And Joseph ended up in Egypt, and he had a difficult time there for a while. There were also some good things which happened to him, but it was a difficult time for him. Eventually, though, he rose to governor, and this, of course, would have given him the opportunity to take vengeance on his brothers now that they were in a much weaker position. What had happened is that a great famine had occurred in the Near East, and everybody was coming to Egypt to buy grain because they had great stores of it. Joseph could have used this opportunity to get back at them for what they had done to him. He really could have inflicted great harm on them, and yet he chose not to. He chose to see God's hand in what had happened to him. This is not as easy as it sounds. It's easy for us to say to other people, you need to forgive. You must forgive. It's so easy for us to do that. But when we have something to forgive, oh my gosh, it's a lot harder. We're like, oh, I'm never going to trust that person again. Or, oh, you have no idea what that person did to me. And absolutely, um, we often don't see the effect that hurt has on people. And it's very easy for us to say, oh, well, just, you know, forgive and forget. Sometimes we can forgive, but we'll never forget. Sometimes we can forgive and we can move on. Forgiveness is tough. I think if we honestly ask ourselves if Christianity is hard or easy, I think we can come up with two answers which are not opposed to each other but tell the whole truth. It's easy in theory. It's easy to understand what God asks of us. If we really want to follow what Jesus asks, we know what we should be doing. But it's much harder to put it into practice. People get very concerned when they've been ripped off. This is kind of where today's gospel is going. Uh, if you've lost money, you've lent money out and it hasn't been paid back, it's very difficult to trust that person who lent it again. Yes, there may be mitigating circumstances, you know, some additional financial misfortune happened, but sometimes we feel the person has not paid it back because of malicious intent. It's tough to trust, it really is. And we live in a very distrustful world. Forgiveness is a difficult thing at times, and yet it's important for us to remember that we need to have some forgiveness because we too need to be forgiven. It's easy to say, ah, well, I've got to forgive others. But it's much harder to say, ah, I too need to be forgiven. That's not easy. Uh, it never is. Because we often see ourselves as being the good people. 
and others as being the bad people. Uh, we, we do this all the time. We tend to see ourselves as the force of good, and yeah, that may be true, but there are times we fall short of that, all of us. And admitting we made a mistake or admitting we deliberately did something bad is tough because then suddenly we don't really have that moral, shall we say, superiority we think we do. Um, it's easy to condemn others when we think that we're right all the time. Much harder when we realize that we do foolish things as well. God knows that we are not perfect. And there's no way we can trick God. We might think we can, but we can't. It doesn't work that way. And when we look at uh, today's epistle reading, it's interesting because we talk about the man of flesh and the man of heaven. And we as human beings have both aspects as a part of us. Um, we live in the world here and now. We're physical beings. And as physical beings, we, we are far from perfect. When we talk about the man from heaven, we speak of, you know, a spiritual ideal, which, you know, also is part of uh, who we are, and yet has not been perfected. Um, it's interesting because I think sometimes, sometimes we fall into this trap that once a person is baptized, everything is hunky-dory afterwards. They never do anything wrong. Everything goes well. Well. You look at the millions and millions and millions and millions of people who've been baptized over the years, that's not really the case at all. Um, even after we're baptized, life throws curveballs at us. Life puts us in situations we may not want to deal with. The words of Jesus today are very, very challenging indeed. They're not words we necessarily want to hear, because what he asks us to do are things we may not necessarily want to do. I think we're on board with a bit of it, but it's much harder. I mean, if somebody took my coat, and I'm just thinking about Sunday when it was minus 16, I don't want to offer them my shirt. Seriously, it's cold outside. Um, I think a lot of us can, can sympathize. In the summertime, okay, fine. You know, I, I can buy a new coat in the fall. Jesus challenged us, us to be the best people we can be. And being the best people we can be means being better than our comfort zone usually dictates we should be. It means taking on more. It means living to a higher standard. And not a lot of us like that idea. A lot of us like the idea we're doing just fine. But it's important to remember that although we may be doing well, God always asks us to do more. And sometimes we can really resist that. We can resist that full force. I hope and pray that all of us are, are not so stubborn as to refuse God's invitation, and that we'll prayerfully consider it. But I also realize that sometimes we need to work through things before we're able to accept God's invitation. If we think about Joseph in Egypt, Joseph was not confronted immediately with his brother's request for food. It was after several years. Joseph had to go through a whole process of forgiving them. And even when he did forgive his brothers, they knew that what they did was bad. They knew what they did was a very, very detrimental thing to Joseph. And they never quite trusted him for quite, uh, you know, quite a while in his life. They were always worried, especially after their father died, that he was going to take vengeance upon them. They needed forgiveness. Joseph gave them forgiveness, but it took them a while to accept that forgiveness. It really did. Because sometimes we feel when we've done something, it's not redeemable. We feel, I have done this action, I can never get my life back on track again. And, and that is not true. Now, it doesn't mean that things will necessarily be the way they once were, but what it means is that you know, when, when forgiveness happens, it is a new beginning, and it's not necessarily the way it was before, but it can be something very good going forward. We live in a very challenging time. Um, the pandemic continues, tensions rise throughout the world, life is, is not easy, and yet, no matter how challenging the times were, 
whether it was plague, whether it was war, whether it was, was famine, the gospel was always present. The words of Jesus to inspire and encourage us um, have been with us for thousands of years, and they still continue to have power today. We will get through this pandemic. We will get through whatever um, strife there is in society. But what kind of people will we be after we've gotten through it? Will we, be, will we be hardened to the world? Not interested in the welfare of others, only about ourselves. Or will we be the people Jesus suggests we should be in today's gospel? The choice is ours. And it's a much harder choice than any of us want to admit. Some of us like the security of being able to you know, cut off the rest of the world, live in our own bubble and not worry about others. And others realize that that's not really what God seeks for us. As we continue to journey through the pandemic, let us let the words of Jesus give us something to think about. As we get ready for the season of Lent, let us let these words give us meaning as we go through our Lenten pilgrimage. Let them inspire us. Let them inform us. Let them shape us in the way Christ would like. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. That we may see God's presence in the lives of those who wrong us. Let us offer to God the needs of the whole world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you spoke to your people of old. Give to your church heirs to hear your voice speaking in our day, even through those we name as enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for the nations of the world we pray, let not anger consume us. Take away from us false virtue and break down all dividing walls of hostility. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in Jesus you called us to sacrificial love. Enable us to serve all those in need, the poor, the homeless, the sick, and the dying. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, through the hardships of the Hebrew leaders, you preserve the life of your people. 
comfort all those in distress. Make of human suffering a gracious gift of life for others. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord, in Jesus, you have given us the first fruit of your dominion. Plant your life-giving spirit in us and in our land, that we may bring forth justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord, we bring before you the needs of those from our parish, those who are shedding, those who are ill. Have mercy on them, Lord, and grant them your peace. We pray for those who have died, especially George Williams. May his soul rest in peace. Lord, who formed humanity of the dust of the earth, reform us into the likeness of your Christ. May your mercy pour into our lives. May we see ourselves as one with those we accuse and so know the joy of forgiveness given and received through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you.
God, accept all we offer you this day. Lead us to love you with all our heart and to love all people with your perfect love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. Glory to you forever and ever. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again, you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, born of a woman, to be our savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death, he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
212, breaking of the bread number one. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you. Savior Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.